The Edict of Nantes, signed in April 1598 by King Henry IV of France, granted the Calvinist Protestants of France, also known as Huguenots, substantial rights in the nation, which was still considered essentially Catholic at the time. In the Edict, Henry aimed primarily to promote civil unity. The Edict separated civil from religious unity, treated some Protestants for the first time as more than mere schismatics and heretics, and opened a path for secularism and tolerance. In offering general freedom of conscience to individuals, the edict offered many specific concessions to the Protestants, such as amnesty and the reinstatement of their civil rights, including the right to work in any field or for the state and to bring grievances directly to the king. It marked the end of the religious wars that had afflicted France during the second half of the 16th century. The Edict of St. Germain, promulgated 36 years before by Catherine de' Medici, had granted limited tolerance to Huguenots but was overtaken by events, as it was not formally registered until after the massacre of Vassy on 1 March 1562, which triggered the first of the French Wars of Religion. The later Edict of Fontainebleau, which revoked the Edict of Nantes in October 1685, was promulgated by Louis XIV, the grandson of Henry IV. It drove an exodus of Protestants and increased the hostility of Protestant nations bordering France. Overview. The Edict aimed primarily to end the long-running French wars of religion. Henry IV also had personal reasons for supporting the Edict. Prior to assuming the throne in 1589 he had espoused Protestantism, and he remained sympathetic to the Protestant cause, he had converted to Catholicism in 1593 only in order to secure his position as king, supposedly saying, Paris is well worth a mass. The edict succeeded in restoring peace and internal unity to France, though it pleased neither party. Catholics rejected the apparent recognition of Protestantism as a permanent element in French society and still hoped to enforce religious uniformity, while Protestants aspired to full parity with Catholics which it did not provide. Toleration in France was a royal notion, and the religious settlement was dependent upon the continued support of the crown. Re-establishing royal authority in France required internal peace, based on limited toleration enforced by the Crown. Since royal troops could not be everywhere, Huguenots needed to be granted strictly circumscribed possibilities of self-defense. The Edict. The Edict of Nantes that Henry IV signed comprised four basic texts, including a principal text made up of 92 articles and largely based on unsuccessful peace treaties signed during the recent wars. The edict also included 56 particular, secret, articles dealing with Protestant rights and obligations. For example, the French state guaranteed protection of French Protestants traveling abroad from the Inquisition. This crucifies me, protested Pope Clement VIII, upon hearing of the edict. The final two parts consisted of brevets, letters patent, which contained the military clauses and pastoral clauses. These two brevets were withdrawn in 1629 by Louis XIII, following a final religious civil war. The two letters patent supplementing the edict granted the Protestant safe havens, places de sûreté, which were military strongholds such as La Rochelle, in support of which the king paid 180,000 acres a year, along with a further 150 emergency forts, places de refuge, to be maintained at the Huguenots' own expense. Such an act of toleration was unusual in Western Europe, where standard practice forced subjects to follow the religion of their ruler, the application of the principle of quius regio, ius religio. While it granted certain privileges to Huguenots, the edict upheld Catholicism's position as the established religion of France. Protestants gained no exemption from paying the tithe and had to respect Catholic holidays and restrictions regarding marriage. The authorities limited Protestant freedom of worship to specified geographic areas. The edict dealt only with Protestant and Catholic coexistence, it made no mention of Jews, or of Muslims, who were offered temporary asylum in France when the Moriscos were being expelled from Spain. The original act which promulgated the edict has disappeared. 
The Archives Nationales in Paris preserves only the text of a shorter document modified by concessions extracted from the King by the clergy and the Parliament of Paris, which delayed ten months before finally signing and setting seals to the document in 1599. A copy of the first edict, sent for safekeeping to Protestant Geneva, survives. The provincial parliaments resisted in their turn, the most recalcitrant, the Parliament of Rouen, did not unreservedly register the edict until 1609. The location of the signing is uncertain. The edict itself states merely that it is given at Nantes, in the month of April, in the year of Our Lord 1598. By the late 19th century the Catholic tradition cited the signing in the Maison des Torrels, home of prosperous Spanish trader André Ruiz, it was destroyed by bombing in World War II. Revocation. The edict remained unaltered in effect, registered by the parliaments as fundamental and irrevocable law, with the exception of the brevets, which had been granted for a period of eight years, and were renewed by Henry in 1606 and in 1611 by Marie de Medesis who confirmed the edict within a week of the assassination of Henry, stilling Protestant fears of another St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. The subsidies had been reduced by degrees, as Henry gained more control of the nation. By the Peace of Montpelier in 1622, concluding a Huguenot revolt in Languedoc, the fortified Protestant towns were reduced to two, La Rochelle and Montauban. The brevets were entirely withdrawn in 1629, by Louis XIII, following the siege of La Rochelle, in which Cardinal Richelieu blockaded the city for 14 months. During the remainder of Louis XIII's reign, and especially during the minority of Louis XIV, the implementation of the edict varied year by year, voiced in declarations and orders, and in case decisions in the council, fluctuating according to the tides of domestic politics and the relations of France with powers abroad. In October 1685, Louis XIV, the grandson of Henry IV, renounced the edict and declared Protestantism illegal with the Edict of Fontainebleau. This act, commonly called the Revocation of the Edict of Nantes, had very damaging results for France. While the wars of religion did not reignite, intense persecution of Protestants took place. All Protestant ministers were given two weeks to leave the country unless they converted to Catholicism and all other Protestants were prohibited from leaving the country. In spite of the prohibition, the persecution including many examples of torture caused as many as 400,000 to flee France at risk of their lives. Most moved to Great Britain, Prussia, the Dutch Republic, Switzerland, South Africa and the new French colonies and the 13 colonies in North America. This exodus deprived France of many of its most skilled and industrious individuals, some of whom thenceforward aided France's rivals in the Netherlands and in England. The revocation of the Edict of Nantes also further damaged the perception of Louis XIV abroad, making the Protestant nations bordering France even more hostile to his regime. Upon the revocation of the edict, Frederick William, Elector of Brandenburg issued the Edict of Potsdam, which encouraged Protestants to come to Brandenburg, Prussia. Freedom to worship and civil rights for non-Catholics in France were not restored until the signing of the Edict of Versailles, also known as the Edict of Tolerance, by Louis XVI 102 years later, on 7 November 1787. This edict was enacted by Parliament two months later, less than two years before the end of the Ancien Regime and the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen of 1789 would fully eliminate religious discrimination in France.